Tracking of white sharks is one of the most invaluable, unique resources available to researchers. In Hansbai, South Africa, we have the densest population of white sharks in the world. Here, more than anywhere else, we have the opportunity to gain an understanding of these animals, which will be vital to their conservation. It's no exaggeration to say that white sharks, like many other species, are on the verge of extinction. Researchers, ecotourism operators, fishermen, we all see the evidence every day, and the majority of us want to do something about it. My name is Oliver Jewell. I'm a marine biologist with the Dyer Island Conservation Trust. Recently, I completed my Masters in Zoology, during which we learned some incredible things about white sharks, none of which would have been possible without track. So there are various types of tag available, including satellite tags, such as spot or pat tags, which can transmit data from anywhere in the world, but must be at the surface and require satellite coverage overhead in order for the transmission to be received. For our research, however, our chosen method is manual acoustic tracking, as this provides us with the best balance of cost, practicality, and most importantly, the transmitters are relatively easy to deploy to free swimming sharks. So first of all, we'll get a team together. We must ensure all the equipment is prepared, move out to sea, and head towards an area we know we're likely to encounter a white shark. Once we arrive at a hotspot, we begin chumming for sharks. This method involves mixing discarded fish products and oils into the sea. This entices the sharks to the bait. There are lots of myths and misinformation about how this process conditions white sharks, but there's no evidence to support this. We only work in areas we know sharks are inhabiting, likewise we don't actually feed the animals. We just use this method to attract them within viewing or tagging distance. While the sharks are at the boat, we take data and photographs to document their characteristics, eventually deciding on the animal we wish to track based on their size and what questions about their behaviour we wish to answer. What's really amazing about this part of the job is when you start to recognise individual sharks by their own personality. Until you've seen it for yourself, it's almost impossible to understand just how unique each of these animals really is. Once we've identified the shark we want to work with, we prepare the tag. This must be done quickly as sharks often spend less than 15 minutes around the boat. A long pole is then used to deploy the tag directly to the shark. The size and strength of the animals mean they barely notice the tag. It's a quick process, allowing the sharks to continue with their natural behaviour right away. With the tag in place, we can begin tracking the shark. The tag itself emits an acoustic ping, which is received by a hydrophone connected to a specialised receiver called a VR100. This tells us our distance from the shark, the approximate direction of their movements, their swimming depth and the current temperature of the tag. We will stay on sea for as long as the weather allows. Following the shark, recording data and fundamentally shadowing it during its day-to-day -day routine. Once we've collected a decent amount of data, usually 50 to 100 hours, it's time to crunch the numbers. We can compare tracking data with numerous sharks to build up a strong understanding of where they operate throughout the year and gain an unprecedented knowledge of their behaviour. This information is absolutely vital because the more we understand about these amazing animals, the more effectively we can shape legislation and enforcement which will then ensure they continue to flourish in the wild. One of the challenges we face as scientists is the expense of performing this kind of research. The Conservation Trust depends heavily on the involvement of individuals who understand the purpose of our work and want to be a part of it. We also help significantly by the involvement of bigger companies such as Volkswagen. Volkswagen have made a massive difference to our work. They've recognised a very serious threat to the natural environment, but haven't just thrown money at it. They've shown a genuine interest 
made a promise to take action and stood by that every step of the way. And you know, that's what it's about at the end of the day. There's a lot of doom and gloom surrounding shark conservation. And sure, the situation isn't ideal, but it's not without hope. Projects like tracking, support like that of Volkswagen, and the involvement from people all around the world reminds us that we do have the potential to change things. That we can help great white sharks and other species continue to flourish and evolve for generations to come. It's a tough challenge, there's lots of hard work ahead and it's not going to be easy. But then, nothing worth fighting for ever is.